Hey, Christian. How, you How are you doing? Can you hear me? I can hear you loud Excellent. and clear. I like this intro music. I've, um, I've chosen this intro music specially today. I've actually put some work into choosing the intro music this time as a respect for uh, somebody who lives in a wild west town of Phoenix. <laughs> this is a, uh, I am, and I'm actually here, yeah. so that's nice. <laughs> this track is is entitled "Dude, Where's My Horse?" It's. Um, <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, we keep the horses out back. <laughs> I had a great time in Phoenix. I love. Uh, Thank I love, you. I love the city. Appreciate love, that. Love the state of Arizona. <laughs> Wonderful place. Let me shut that off. I'm sorry. Um, hey, the last episode. I'm I'm pretty. I've really enjoyed doing this series all the way through, and and I think now we kind of get to the, the kind of the culmination of, of things when we when we can really start to dig in and look at uh, debugging. I don't think this is an easy thing to do with, um, with 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 microservices in the modern world. No, I mean when you take one when you take your monolith and you split it up into a bunch of different things, and you, know, you used to be able to just say. I know where the issue is. It's right in the, it's the model. It's right here. It's either that or the database. But now you split it up into a bunch of different things. It could be it could be a murder mystery. Like uh, you try to figure that out. I think that's a lovely way to put it. You got uh, <laughs> Poirot and Miss Marple kind of wandering around, <laughs> trying to work out who who hit the API with the the pipe in the um... in the study. Yes. Right. <laughs> so what? Yeah. Um... So yeah. Um, so this is a continuation of the series that we've been doing for the last two months now. I think we've, uh, we've been pretty good about doing it every week. Um, and this is all based on the content that we put together for KubeCon North America 2019. And, um, it's, it's focused on developers and how developers start going down this path of microservices and cloud native architectures, yeah. and what are some of the, the tools and infrastructure that can help? And so we've been looking at this through the lens of service mesh, specifically console service mesh, and some of the tools around it to help with tracing and canary automation. And now we'll be talking today about debugging. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. I um I dig oh we got a special uh, a special guest um one second just for Betty she'll be here in a second but um yeah I I think this is a really really complicated um thing for many people to kind of figure out on their own but actually I think when you dig into it it really isn't that complicated it's just kind of like finding all of those various different component pieces and, um, and being able to kind of stick them all, stick them all together. The, the reason I'm kind of looking around is because my, my dog's troubling me here. I promised, um, oh, I promised Betty that, that Pan Bear would, would make an appearance and, and you did? You did it, Pambe? Are you going to teach us some debugging on microservices? She says, I will, I will teach you how to debug some, uh, some lovely snacks later on if you're interested. Seem to have lost your audio there, Christian. Oh, you did. There we Sorry go. about that. You're all good. What was the dog's name? Panda bear. Pan bear. So it's uh. Pan. Yeah, it's it's Farsi for cotton ball. Oh, okay. All right. Very good. <laughs> well, thanks for stopping by, Pan bear. <laughs> she says you're 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 welcome. And if you're uh, if you're interested in learning a thing about too about um, DevOps or or anything like that, to drop by any time. She knows a lot very good actually i'll be in london in about a week and a half so we'll talk devops <laughs> let's get cool started. so yeah let's uh, let's take a look at where we were where we ended last episode which was 
exploring canary deployments and giving developers the tools to release code into production in a more controlled and, uh, and uh, a way to lower the risk of, of making these changes so that we don't impact everyone when, uh, when we make these changes. Yeah. Um, yeah, but we didn't actually discuss, well, how do you find out where the problem is? Well, obviously right. the, the tracing right. tells you, but it doesn't give you the precise location. Right. So let's pick it up from from there and let's come back to you should be able to see my screen where we have our Visual Studio running in the web browser, I might add, which is pretty handy, especially when you're building a workshop and you uh, want to make this accessible to people. But so what we have on the on the bottom here in our terminal is. Uh, so we'll call we'll call our service. And so just to recall the services kind of look like this, we have a, a web service, actually, let's just come over here. Get pod, we have a, a web service right here um, that is calling various collaborator services. And in a second, we'll take a look at what that chain looks like. But at the, at the end, we're calling a payment service which has two deployments. So we have the, the payment, let me clean some of this noise up. We have the, the original blue deployment and we have a newer green deployment, which is where we ended up with uh, at the end of our last session where we would, would show canary automation and control over being able to route to the various paint new, you know, the old payment service and then the new payment payment service. So now when we call into our microservices, <clears throat> excuse me, we're gonna be calling in through the uh, API gateway that we have here. And we're using yes. Glue to, uh, to manage ingress into our service mesh and into our collection of services. And, but so when we, when we make the call here, you'll notice a couple of things. One, it hangs a little bit, all right? Okay, and then we're, we're able to see the, the uh, chain of calls. Yeah. So web goes to API v1, which then calls into uh, one of the payment services. We saw that it, it hung right there, and, and, and in fact, it proactively um, timed out. Yeah. Which is which is good. That'll but then, if we idea. call it, sometimes, well, this one will also look like it will hang. <laughs> but if we call it sometimes, then it should return a little faster, yeah. and with two uh, hundreds, right? So we get. <clears throat> Excuse me. We get a, a load balancing effect because we're using the canary automation to split it. That's where we left it 50-50 yes. in the last episode. And, uh, and and we get this this kind of behavior. Yeah, and that 50-50 split is, it, it's based over a period of time. So, you, you know, you're, right. you're not going to yeah. get an exact kind of two for one, but right. it will over, say, 100 requests. We should have pretty much 50-50. That's generally right. the way things work out. And this is yeah. happening at layer seven. Exactly. So this is happening at the request level, at the protocol level, and we're routing per request. We're not load balancing new connections coming yeah. in, right? It's, a, it's per request. We're using Envoy, under the, right? So Glue uses Envoy under the covers. Console Service Mesh uses Envoy under the covers. Envoy has kind of become this application networking framework and that, that kind of shows up in these types of tools, and, and it's awesome. So. And I'm yep. guessing because everything is is protocol aware, you, you can probably yes. configure something in Glue that that again understands that we've received a 500 and probably issue an automated retries. Exactly. Yep. We can program retries, circuit breaking, all of the things that you can see in in Envoy. And actually, if you look at, I think it was episode two of this series yeah. where we looked at the difference between an API gateway and a service mesh. Right, so there's overlap, obviously, in the technology that it uses. In some of its capabilities, um, but if you go back to that that episode, we we sort of iron out the why why is an API gateway different than a service mesh? And we'll we'll stick the link for that uh, um, up yeah. up there for folks to to go back and review because I thought that was real uh, re really interesting. Um, yes, yeah. Awesome. yeah, that was a great episode. So we see here, uh, you know, we're load balancing between these various backend services. We're hitting some errors on some. We looked in, I believe, the third episode at instrumenting our code with distributed tracing. Right? So 
we showed Jaeger and how we can track the, the call stack, if you will, through the various microservices. If we click on find traces down here, we can see the last few calls that we made, uh, some of the ones that succeeded. We can see web called API called payment, mm -hmm. but then we can also see the ones that didn't complete so successfully, right? Now, we know we deployed the green version of our service as we, we made some changes and we, made, and we made a deployment there and we're using the Canary automation to, um, to control what, who actually sees these changes. But what we can do when we find situations like this is actually debug into the, the services. Yeah. Now, what we're going to take a look at is oh sorry christian dude oh, can you ahead. um can you just zoom up uh just to touch there for some some folks at home in the in, here in the in the browser yeah maybe just both uh, your um yeah that looks perfect uh that looks better it. yeah that's probably better okay I'm, it's hard to say i've got such a, a huge screen Bad and, I, and i've actually shrunk the resolution on my main screen here so i was hoping that it would look uh a little bit bigger there but Okay, yeah, but I've improved that uh, the text size a little bit more. Hopefully that works. That cool. uh, but what, what we want to do here is in our new service, in our, in our payments green service, we want to be able to debug into. So here's, here's the code. We can see we've made some changes to it, uh, accommodating what we did in the previous session. Mm -hmm. We switched out the HTTP client and uh, added some imports and so on. But what we would like to do is be able to debug. Now, what we're going to use, we're going to use a tool here called Squash. Oops, squash. Now, this is an open source project from Solo that allows you to debug into your set of microservices running on Kubernetes, regardless of what programming language they're written in. So right now we're going to, we'll, we'll show you how to do the debugging, but we'll do it. The, the, the code for this is written in Golang, but we support, if you click on debuggers over here, we support various uh, languages, program, programming languages. So the similar effect can be had with, uh, with however you de de deploy your applications and, and, and write them. So you, so what uh, we're going to do, yes, go ahead. You support um, monolithic dinosaur languages like Java? <laughs> we do <laughs> because people use it. I mean, that's still out there. <laughs> and so, uh, er, you know, whether it's the new fancy ones um, or the old dinosaur ones, we, you know, your microservice environment is probably going to be heterogeneous and, uh, and yeah, we really support that. I may not have much fish, facial hair, but I'm all about the hipster line. Absolutely. Absolutely. Haskell. <laughs> um, all right, so let's do. Let's open up the uh, the VS Code plugins, and we start typing squash. So this will give us an interface to select the services that we want to debug. And in this case, it's running in the default namespace. If we type payment, we can refine our search down. We're gonna we're gonna debug into the green service. That's our new service that we deployed. And if we look inside the pod, we see we have the console service mesh sidecar running as well as a little helper sidecar running with the actual service here. So just, just for the folks yeah. who um, from home who are, who are watching here, this I absolutely love because all of that information around what the pod is, the container in the pod, the, the, the squash debugger is actually just making that. I just click, 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 click. Yep. That's a, that's a really, really lovely developer experience. Um, real sort of props to the team who, who developed that. Thank you. Yep. I'll, I'll relay that back. And, uh, and so we have this IDE plugin inside of uh, VS Code here. You can do all this from the command line as well. You can do remote uh, port forwarding. So you can hook up a different IDE that doesn't have a, uh, a plugin natively. Uh, but in VS Code here, we can see we have the, the plugin that helps streamline setting this stuff up. Now, if I click on payment, now we can check the debugger that we would like to use. And uh, we'll use uh, Dell for this is the Golang process. And we give this a second. Now, behind the scenes, what it's doing is um, 
it's spinning up a, a pod that then will discover where the process is and attach the debug. So the debug is running in this, in this pod. It's running in a headless mode in this case and is uh, connecting back to the IDE. So let's get rid of this message. So you can see here now we're in debug mode. And uh, if we click, let's say uh, right here, but we create a request, we can see we set a breakpoint. And then now if I uh, curl the, the, the surface again, we see we are hanging. We should, oh no, that one didn't hang. Okay, it was just a little bit slow. Uh, oh, did it? Yeah, we got a breakpoint there. That's we that's did hit. Awesome. We did hit a breakpoint. Uh, here, let's let's let it continue. You know what I've noticed also is that since this is running on, uh, actually, is this one running? No, I, I don't know. Let's, let's try that again. It's probably that one cool. worked. That one worked. Come on, load balancer. That one didn't work, oh, or it slowed down, and we can see that it indeed did hit, uh, and then ended up. The, the timeout kicked in, but we're still inside the service here. And now we're running in Kubernetes, running at one of our microservices. We've connected our IDE to it. Uh, and now we can do step-by-step -step debugging using the, uh, you know, the, the tooling here in, um, in, v, in VS Code. Now, if we try to step over this, we can see, oh, that one completed. That's, let's, let's just try. Oh, so this is because the, um, the upstream service is, um... The upstream service is dropping the dropping the connection um, when it when it when it times out. But uh, let's try that again. We should end up seeing. Uh, or you know what? Maybe the source code's not lining up. I'm... No, I think it's um, I think it's the upstream service is dropping the connection, and then the um, it's it's kind of all just hanging up. But this is um. This is pretty, pretty impressive. Like being in, so let let's talk about this source code lining up. Um, yeah. Thing. So, I mean, that's a that's a thing. I don't think that's a real problem because if if you kind of take an approach of versioning versioning code and tagging code, but yeah, but you do have to have that. Um, you do have to the the code that you're running in your browser that you've got there has to be. The same code that's deployed into the pod uh, exactly that's been baked into whatever container or if it's a compiled application like golang it's been compiled and that's the app there that the two have to be aligned in order for this this step debugging process to work correctly that's correct yep all right let's see if we can there we go and we step over oh, that one seems to be going just fine <laughs> Uh, it, it, so, I mean, I, it, it is possible that this, this isn't lining up, uh, specifically, but it, it's the timeouts, I think we're, we're or, running or it's a live demo and that's what's screwing me up here, Always the live demo. <laughs> but nevertheless, the, the workflow is through the, uh, here, I click stop again and I'll, I'll show it one more time through the IDE, uh, where our application, our, our service is running in. So through the combination of distributed tracing and, uh, log, you know, kind of troubleshooting it can kind of help narrow it down, but that can't get you inside your code. Yeah. And, and, and squash will greatly simplify the ability to get into uh, your, 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 your service and, and connect up to it and, and debug it. So we come back here. I mean, I was, I was um, unduly kind of sarcastic about, about sort of Java earlier on, but yeah. I'll be honest with you, anybody who's programmed go, if you've ever debugged a service, you know that your most commonly used approach for debugging is format.println and that is <laughs> Yeah. But um, th this, this is, a, in my humble opinion, a, a huge, huge, huge advancement um, in, in technology. Yeah. Now, the, the other interesting thing that, that I want to show you in terms, of, in terms of debugging here is that, here, let's, let's hit stop. Is that when we're debugging here, we're connecting up to the actual workload running inside of Kubernetes. Yeah. Now, if you're in a production environment, that might not be feasible. Mm -hmm. 
not, not very many of our enterprise customers have direct access to connect their IDEs into production. Um, but what we can do in that case is through, uh, through, through Envoy, through Glue, through the service mesh, the requests are traveling through the Envoy proxies, right? So what we can do is record the requests as they're happening. And for errors, we can save the requests, put them off into a file system or database somewhere, and then be able to pull them back in a different environment, same environment or different environment, and recreate the call chain that happened You're against kidding. services that you might then have the ability to go debug into. That's not true. That is not possible, right? Seriously? Well, I'm until until Service Mesh and Envoy came along, that was you would have to kind of hand code that and build that in, and you know, oh, yeah. it became I've, pretty pretty messy. But. I've done my fair share of trying to grep log files to do replay, yeah. and it ain't pretty. This I am gonna yeah. I am looking forward to. So let's take a look at what we have. So we have uh, what we've done at Solo. So what we're doing at Solo really is how do we lay the foundation of this network abstraction? So we have from the from the edge into the cluster, your gateways, your service mesh, all this stuff provides a nice API on top of what's happening in your network and the ability to control it, right? And so what we what we feel is that let's let's help people be successful with service mesh and adopting this Envoy-based technology so that we can build the stuff on top of it that really matters, like canary yeah. automation, right? So instead of going there and hand typing, all right, let's change the traffic from 50% to 10% and so forth. Let's, let's build a control loop to automate the operator to actually do that. Mm -hmm. um, and let's build tools to be able to debug microservices when, they're, uh, you know, when things go wrong. So loop is another example of building on top of this abstraction. Yeah. If we come in here and we, we take a look at what's deployed, we see we have the, the loop, uh, no, no pun intended, the control loop, that loop is running to be able to see what's happening in the system. Yeah. Um, if we, to get access to it, let's port forward things correctly. All right, so now if we do loop, Control list and cross fingers. Okay, we see nice. that we do actually have some. This was a bit unexpected. I think I didn't clean up after after the previous um, the previous run to make sure that everything was working. But you can see for any of those five hundreds, yeah, it looks like we have some calls coming in that uh, uh, maybe maybe um, you know what glue does some automatic discovery of services, so we can we can see yeah. that some of these calls are coming in and they fail. But Loop has been collecting the failed calls. And the way we, we configured that is if we come in here and look at our tap resource, we see we can specify the predicate, how we want to match requests. And if they do match, then capture them using Loop so, so and save them to be able to replay them later. And, and um, kind of... So the tap, the tap configuration, mm -hmm. Solo actually contributed upstream to to Envoy to with the tap that's filter, correct. which has right. been merged so like in. If we come over here 13, to I think. Envoy, that's 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 wonderful. Um, uh, look at the docs. So we built Loop on top of the tap functionality that we that we get out of out of Envoy. And if we search for the tap config, we should find the tap filter. The internet here is quite slow. Maybe with all the streaming and stuff that we're doing here. Oh, for sure. Uh, well, trust me, it's yeah, it's we can see it there. <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, right. So then we've created that. Now either we let's see if we uh, hit tap tap config and everything. Oh, it's not found. So it must have it must have been around from a, a previous a previous version. Um, but let's go ahead and create the tap config. Um, that would be in glue loop tap. So let's actually create it. Nice. And now, if we go ahead and, and, and get them, we should see that we've we've now been correctly configuring yep. loop here. 
And now if we come back here and, uh, you know, I want to get rid of, uh, Let's just go ahead and, and clean up those those old uh, the leftover ones from the demo before, which I didn't clean up. Um, so now that should come back. But I, I really like this. So the the loop um, oh. loop is very lightweight. The loop controller loop back can, is sitting yeah. uh, is sitting in in the cluster, it's a very lightweight component, but I can use the CRDs here that, um, that, that you have the tap configuration, configure my own predicates. So we're just using response headers, but I'm guessing I can literally use any predicate I want to, to just kind of differentiate and, and very sort of fine tune That's which traffic I want to select. Uh, and let me just re reset this, this uh, here. Because when I oh, oh yeah okay. when I did the 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 bounce of the of this pod the uh, P six yeah Kube control doesn't um, doesn't automatically reattach to the to the new pod when it comes up all right so let's go ahead and try that again. There we go. And now let's try our list. We don't have any, so we're starting nice. from scratch. But if we do uh, tap config, we see we have our tap config there. Mm -hmm. Now, if we curl into the, the gateway again and we see things hang, which we see here, which still determine whether that's internet. OK, no, no, that, that's, yeah. a, that's a real failure mm -hmm. there. Um, let's, uh, now take a look at our list. We should see crossing fingers. There it is. A new entry because we, we caught that 500. Yeah. And so now we've saved off this request because it failed, matched our predicate. And from here, now what we can do is replay that request. Yeah. So let's come back over here and let's, let's set up our debugger again. Default. Payments. I love green. this UX. Payment, and we'll use Delve. We'll set up the debugger again. Now, instead of calling into through the API gateway, what we're going to do is replay that request using loop. Okay. And we'll give that a chance to come up. And let's replay our request into loop. Wow. And here we go. We see now we have we 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 have full debug control over. Um, our application, wow. as well as the ability to replay those those requests, and I can do step over. And this could be in a lower environment, right? So yeah. this could be in a totally different environment than in production. Uh, I don't. I'm speechless. I'm. Uh, I genuinely <laughs> think that's incredible, and I hope, uh, yeah. I hope folks who are watching think think that's pretty good. And we'll put all of the links below um, to a little environment that we've created where you can kind of try this out without. Even having to install anything, and um, and also the links to to Loop and Squash, so that you can you can have a play around. But but I I really recommend everybody does so. This this would make my life one million times easier. Yeah, and I, I mean this is this is something that I use quite a bit, even uh, to debug, you know, any services running in Kubernetes. Yeah. Um, to but, debug Glue itself sometimes, uh, Istio sometimes. So yeah, it's a. Uh, you know the thing uh, I love the most about this though. Consistency, like yeah. if you you go through the whole process, you you debug. The, the purpose of debugging is to find a problem. You fix the problem, or you think you may have fixed the problem. With loop, I can actually replay exactly the same condition that I was testing right. previously. There's no ambiguity that I've actually put different inputs in, which has led to the bug magically disappearing. I can 100% uh, be assured of that. So you can go through and recreate the issue? solve it right. and then go through and test that it solved it yeah. right so then you would get uh, a different different behaviors if you've solved it correctly very very cool cool yeah so that's the last part of uh of this, this section here so um i'm a little sad that we're at the end <laughs> well maybe we have to do something else 
I think we I think we need to. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I'd love to kind of see, um, and, and a lot of a lot of work that, that you've been putting into around the sort of the web assembly capabilities. If, yeah. If anybody's yeah. not a hundred percent familiar with Envoy, a lot of the pro, well, traditionally, a lot of the plugins for Envoy have been written in C C plus plus, and yeah. I'll be honest with you, like you, you want you don't want me to be coding your C++. It's not something that I've, I've, I've done in a long, long time. And so, it's not a right. language that I'm comfortable with anymore, but now I can use WebAssembly, which means I could write my plugins in anything, compile them down right. to go, and they, they can be hot reloaded, right? That's, that's correct. Dynamically reloaded. So that, that adds, um, another layer of opportunity and uh, extensibility to the data plane that we see here. So whether that's at the edge with something like Blue or whether that's in the service mesh with something like console service mesh, right? So WebAssembly allows us to customize the data plane and build very powerful tooling on top of the mesh, like, like we were just yeah. talking, right? So Loop, for example, is built, we, we, we built the tap filter into Envoy and some accompanying control plane components. But using WebAssembly, you could do stuff very similar or, or even more fine grained than what the tap filter can do today using your own custom own custom code. I think that's going to be so. Yeah, WebAssembly uh, you know opens up the door for uh, really exciting customizations of what happens to the requests on the data plane in a very se secure and controlled way. Right? So that's I would love. I would love to maybe spin up a. Let's series on that. We, I think we're, um, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. And why don't we come back and, and show you all how to, to, to build custom filters with, um, with, with WebAssembly? Because I, th I think that's really, really interesting. I'm dying to learn that. All right. Now I'm less sad. We don't, don't, don't have to come to an end here. <laughs> and, um, well, we should do a shameless plug. If, if anybody is in London next week and is yes. coming to QCon, then please come along because... The following week, right? The week of March second. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the, I think our, our workshops are going to be on the fifth and the fourth and the fifth, or the fifth and sixth, something uh, like that. It's Thursday and Friday. And like yeah. 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 Calendars. I ain't good at that. But yeah. So if you're in the London area, interested in going to QCon, Q, the letter Q, Q Con, um, we'll be there. Come, come, stop by, say hi, join our workshop. We'll, we'll deliver this hands-on. You can ask in person, in, in real life questions. So. Yeah, that would be great. And as always, it's been a pleasure, Christian. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and smash the bell button for all of those updates. I'm getting good at this. But until next time, farewell. Yeah, take care, man. Thank you.